I'm Charity Whedon, the Vice President for Global Space Policy at Astroscale US. And here's what you need to know about honor with servicing and policy. First, I'm going to talk mainly about national policies. You've already heard about standards and best practices, and you'll hear a little more about regulation after this. What I want to share is how governments are starting to set policies that both support and contain honor but servicing activities. Second, let's look again at how we're defining honor but servicing because this is important. In 2007, the International Space University had a team project on this for which I was a part. We define servicing as the following. It is a service offered for scientific, security, or commercial reasons that entail an in-space operation on a selected client spacecraft to fulfill one or more of the following goals. Inspect, move, refuel, repair, recover from launch failure, or add more capability to the system. There's already a rich history of honor but servicing when one considers more than repair of another satellite. In fact, the techniques used in the Apollo missions of rendezvous and docking between the command and lunar modules can be thought of as key beginnings of servicing missions. Assembly and maintenance in space is exemplified by the International Space Station, essentially the largest object to be assembled in space and where routinely humans and robotics conduct box switches and upgrades. Then there are the multitude of repair missions from Skylab in 1973 to SolarMax in 1984 to the five servicing missions for the Hubble Space Telescope. Autonomous rendezvous was practiced with DART, demonstration of autonomous rendezvous technology, and steps toward refueling have also occurred through DARPA's Orbital Express, autonomous refueling mission, and NASA's two robotic refueling missions. The U.S. has not been the only country to successfully test and conduct honor with servicing. There have been also several robotic technology developments, demonstrations, and capabilities from Japan, like the engineering test satellite 7 in 1997, Germany's robotic technology experiment Rotex in 1993, and of course Canada's SRMS, SSRMS, and SPDM, affectionately known as Canada Arm 1, Canada Arm 2, and Dexter. These robotics conduct upgrades and repairs and in some cases assembly. So why the sudden urge, surge rather in honor with servicing? Why pay close attention now? Well, there is an increased interest in applying these servicing technologies and missions to a new wave of space investment. That's right, honor with servicing is going commercial. And with these new commercial offer offerings, come with a host of policy questions that governments are dealing with today. Next slide, please. And we can stay on that slide, actually. So why do governments care? Honor but servicing itself, and especially commercial honor but servicing, does not have a carved out policy agenda in major spacefaring nations. It is attached to other national priorities, like exploration, advancement of technology, and supporting science, space industrial based development and job creation, space security and long-term sustainability of orbits, and international collaboration. Governments can use honor servicing as a tool to tackle modern orbital challenges and is therefore the reason why some policies and strategies identify servicing as an essential current and future capability. You can advance one. Honor servicing can also present challenges for its own, for, in its own for the government. The inherent dual use nature of space activities means that servicing operations that include an object approaching another object requires close government oversight so as to not create misunderstanding or misperception of the activity in a global context. Governments may also need to tackle the growing access of honor with servicing technologies around the world for competitive reasons. As the space economy continues to grow, some nations are setting goals for capturing more space business and growing their own industrial base. Therefore, there is pressure, and rightly so, to create a favorable business environment for innovators 
in the honor of its servicing ecosystem. Finally, the third challenge for governments is how to regulate private industry servicing activities. The Outer Space Treaty's Article 6 still stands, whereby launching states must authorize and have continuing supervision over private space activities. Up until recently, there were no private onward servicing missions, so there is a potential regulatory gap here that I'll net, let our next speaker explain. Next slide, please. Next up, we have a sampling of national honor servicing policies. Starting with the US, there is a clear principle of self-sufficiency when it comes to access space and domestic space capabilities. This could be extended to ensuring reliable in-space logistics for a host of applications. The first item of interest here is the 2010 US National Space Policy. Within, it states that the US should energize competitive domestic industries to participate in global markets. While it does not call out servicing specifically, satellite-based services and increased entrepreneurship is mentioned. The policy also aims to expand international cooperation on mutually beneficial space activities, strengthen stability in space to include mitigation of orbital debris, increasing the assurance and resilience of mission essential functions and supporting infrastructure against disruption or degradation. This is precisely where honor servicing supports. It also calls on to pursue robotic initiatives and foster new industries, as well as pursuing research and development in removal of honor debris and reduction in hazards. Next slide. Beyond the national space policy, space policy directive number three provides some insights into honor servicing as a national priority. There is a realization that emerging commercial ventures such as satellite servicing, debris removal, in-space manufacturing and tourism, as well as new technologies enabling small satellites and very large constellations of satellites are increasingly outpacing efforts to develop and implement government policies and processes to address these new activities, end quote. And that quote, the United States should regularly assess existing guidelines for non-government orbital activities and maintain a timely and responsive regulatory environment for licensing these activities, end quote. Next slide, please. There's also been a history of advancing honor servicing issues within US legislation primarily through support of robotics for civil space purposes. In the 2017 NASA authorization bill, servicing as a priority was evident within, quote, is the sense of Congress that one, satellite servicing is a vital capability that will bolster the capacity and affordability of NASA's ongoing scientific and human exploration operations, while simultaneously enhancing the ability of domestic companies to compete in the global marketplace. And two, future NASA satellites and spacecraft across mission directorates should be constructed in a manner that allows for servicing in order to maximize operational longevity and affordability, end quote. This bill also addressed active debris removal, where NASA was directed to, in collaboration with the heads of other relevant federal agencies, solicit and review concepts and options for removing orbital debris from Earth orbit. There's more here, of course, but this gives just a sampling of the ways that servicing policy is progressing within the United States. Next slide, please. If we can advance one to see, yeah, we'll advance all the way through, thank you. Honor with servicing is seen in Europe as an enabler for sustainable space infrastructure and for space businesses, and is therefore seen as a key technology in Europe for improving the competitiveness of the European space sector. Servicing and component technologies are a focus of European strategy to advance research and innovation. 
for the EU, there's the operating, European Operating Framework, run by a group called Paraspora, to recommend regulation, licensing, and standardization authorities for future honorit operations. The EU has also previously funded a debris removal mission that demonstrates capture technologies called Remove Debris. And the European Space Agency has funded multiple studies and projects related to on-orbit servicing, such as ED Orbit and ADRIOS, the active debris removal in-orbit servicing mission. In Italy, on-orbit servicing and robotic exploration are both identified as a domestic strategic sector for space in the Prime Minister's guidelines on space and aerospace. In Germany, the, their space agency DLR is well known for robotics technologies, and Germany is a major contributor to ESA's active debris removal in orbit servicing program. Germany also funds an initiative called Intelligent Building Blocks for on orbit satellite servicing and assembly, IBOS, that develops standard interfaces. For the UK, in 2016, the UK initiated a space strategy with a focus on topics including in space robotics. In 2018, the UK announced the Prosperity from Space proposal and a space sector deal in the UK for which in orbit robotics and servicing is one of four highlighted priority sectors. In orbit servicing for the UK is focused on expanding the space industrial base where funds from the UK satellite applications catapult are also being used to establish the first in-orbit servicing command and control center, which Astroscale will run. For Japan, advance, thank you. It is safe to say that Japan plays a significant role in on-orbit servicing in terms of active debris removal and has made this a national policy priority. The recently released basic space plan identifies goals of, quote, contributing to national interests, which includes sustainable use of space, contributing to a presence in exploration, and promoting economic growth through innovation. There is also a desire to strengthen the development and demonstration of satellites that incorporate advanced technology. For honor servicing specifically, there is support for industry in this activity leading to a niche of commercial debris removal capabilities. In the past, Japan has funded the Kite mission, which in 2017 attempted to remove debris using an electrodynamic tether. Another ADR mission is in development called CRD2, whereby inspection followed by removal of an upper stage rocket body will occur. Japan also puts a strong emphasis on international collaboration whether in low Earth orbit or for exploration purposes. On the ISS, the Japanese Experiment Module Remote Manipulator System is on the GEM, and it grabs and moves objects in the space environment. You can advance, please. Finally, Canada has been involved with in-orbit robotic and servicing missions since the beginning of the space shuttle days. And the nation has continued the policy of contributing to exploration missions. In its latest space strategy, Canada commits to building the next generation AI enabled deep space robotic system for Gateway. Another good indication that servicing is supported is to just look at the back of a Canadian $5 bill. There, you'll see an honor of servicing operation on the ISS using the SSRMS Canada Arm 2. Next slide. So what's next in honor of servicing policy? Here in the US, the national space policy is undergoing a refresh. It remains to be seen how servicing will be characterized as an enabler of national space priorities, however. What if SPDs one and three give us any direction? Servicing may be integrated into policy in terms of sustainable exploration of the moon and cislunar orbits, environments, sustainability in Earth orbit, 
or as an emerging market for the US government to encourage industry growth and competitiveness. Advance one, please. Binational, multinational, and international dialogue regarding in-orbit servicing. International collaboration is sure to be an element of future servicing missions as it has in the past. Continuing dialogue on norms of behavior surrounding on-orbit servicing will benefit the entire satellite and space community, establishing it as a normal activity in space. As honor servicing becomes a more readily available capability, nations are likely to add this as a topic of interest in either collaboration or ensuring the security of such capability. There are many bilateral dialogues between nations today on space and the United Nations Committee on the U Peaceful Uses of Outer Space may be a venue to bring this topic to the international community. Addressing ownership and salvage. As companies advance the servicing case, there will be a growing business incentive to capture, reuse, or recycle space hardware. If such objects are abandoned, there's little policy or legal path today to conduct this sort of activity. And finally, the next hot item in honor of servicing policy will be addressing insurance and liability. There will be a mix of servicing missions, which will involve national jurisdictions of a various sort. Understanding how insurance, indemnification, and overall liability works for complicated missions will need to be a near-term item to discuss. That's it. That's your overview for honor of servicing policy. Thank you for joining me, and on to the next speaker.